These are the top 10 chilling things Jeffrey Dahmer has said. Number 10, his outlandish admission to attempting to make zombies. The executing was a means to an end. That was the least satisfactory part. I didn't enjoy doing that. That's why I tried to create living zombies with uric acid in the drill to the head, but it never worked. No, the executing was not the objective. I just wanted to have the person under my complete control, not having to consider their wishes being able to keep them there as long as I wanted. This admission is extremely unsettling and hard to believe. Jeffrey Dahmer would often inject various fluids into the brains of his victims in an attempt to create the perfect obedient servant. Number nine, his creepy obsession with being close with all of his victims. I even went so far as planning on setting up an altar with 10 different skulls and skeletons. It was my way of remembering their appearance, their physical beauty. If I couldn't keep them with me whole, I at least could keep their skeletons. This isn't the first time Dahmer explained how he wanted to keep the victims with him, but this one chills me the most. This quote paired with the realization that he was consuming his victims is just one of those things you only hear about in movies. Multiple people tried to expose his crimes before he was actually arrested, but because of racism and homophobia from the authorities, he was allowed to continue. Number eight, the quote of completely admitting to the execution of his victims. To this day, I don't know what started it, the murders. The person to blame is sitting right across from you. It's the only person, not parents, not society, not adult content. I mean, those are just excuses. This quote is especially freaky because he just outright admits that he was the only reason he did the things he did. Dahmer was an extremely ill man. His childhood consisted of his mother almost taking her own life and his father being neglectful. Unfortunately for Dahmer, this quote is most likely untrue. It is a well-known and studied theory that early childhood development plays a large role in the development of psychopathy, especially when exposed to a dysfunctional family. Number seven, his explanation of why he was unempathetic and had an immoral attitude. If a person doesn't think there is a God to be accountable to, then what's the point of trying to modify your behaviors to keep it within acceptable ranges? That's how I thought anyway. I always believe the theory of evolution is truth, that we all just came from slime. When we passed, you know, that was it. There's nothing. Dahmer's religion is very confusing and convoluted. He used to be of the Christian faith, but somewhere along the road he switched. The ideology from this quote comes from his earlier beliefs as an atheist. However, after the executions and some time until his trial, he seemingly completely converted into Christianity again, going so far as to quote the Bible directly during confessions. Number six, his first execution. I wasn't looking for anyone, but about a mile away from the house, there he was, hitchhiking along the road. He wasn't wearing a shirt, he was attractive, I was attracted to him. I stopped, then passed him, and stopped the car and thought, well, should I pick him up or not? And I asked him if he wanted to go back and engage in substance use. And he said, oh yeah. And we went into my bedroom, had some drinks, and from the time I spent with him, I could tell he wasn't gay. I uh, didn't know how else to keep him there other than to get the barbell and to hit him over the head, which I did, then strangled him with the same barbell. Dahmer's first victim was Stephen Hicks in 1991. He was especially brutal when it came to how he treated him even after his passing. The parents of Stephen once wished that Dahmer could feel their agony. His father stated that Stephen would never miss a Christmas and that's how he knew he wasn't coming back before he was pronounced deceased. Number five, when he came to peace with himself after his admission. Your honor, it is over now. This has never been a case of trying to get free. I didn't ever want freedom. Frankly, I wanted to pass for myself. This was a case to tell the world that I did what I did, but not for reasons of hate. I hated no one. I knew I was sick or evil or both. Now I believe I was sick. The doctors have told me about my sickness and now I have some peace. Perhaps one of the most unnerving things about the peculiar case of Jeffrey Dahmer would be how calm and collected he was during his interviews and trials. He always seemed like a calculated criminal, which probably led to the internet giving so much attention to the recent Netflix documentary. Number four, when he accepted his own sociopathic tendencies regarding his emotionless stoicism. I don't even know if I have the capacity for normal emotions or not because I haven't cried for a long time. You just stifle them for so long that maybe you lose them, partially at least, I don't know. It has been proven that stifling emotions can be extremely detrimental to your mental health. It often leads to substance abuse or mental ailments like depression and anxiety. Dahmer had the worst of it all, leading him to his horrific actions, as he had stifled them for so long that he had lost all remorse. Number three, when he explained how he had no real meaning of life and called his life story sick and depressing. I couldn't find any meaning for my life when I was out there. I'm sure as hell not gonna find it here. This is the grand finale of a life poorly spent and the end result is just overwhelmingly depressing. It's just a sick, pathetic, wretched, miserable life story. How it can help anyone, I've no idea. 
Dahmer's father published a book titled A Father's Story in 1994, describing how it felt to be Jeffrey's father. He explained in said book how he was negligent and contemplated reasons on why his son had turned out the way he did. Lionel Dahmer often blamed himself for the severe flaws of his son, Jeffrey. Number two, his reaction to his inability to continue doing what he has done. It's just like a big chunk of me is being ripped out and I'm not quite whole. I don't think I'm over dramatizing it, and I'm certainly deserving of it, but the way I feel now, it's just like you're talking to someone who is terminally ill and facing execution. Execution would be preferable to what I am facing. I just feel like imploding upon myself, you know? I just want to go somewhere and disappear. Dahmer has said in previous interviews how the executions were never enough. He would perform one and say, maybe the next one will do it, maybe the one after that, and he would inevitably just keep going. Number one, his final quote, Ever. He is reported as saying this, I don't care if I live or perish, go ahead and remove me. Jeffrey Dahmer said this as his last words, but he didn't pass away from the execution penalty. He was actually hit by a fellow inmate and passed away while in prison. The harrowing life of Jeffrey Dahmer is sure to be kept in the history books for a long time, and his case should be an example of how everyone can be more careful with strangers, raising their kids, and reporting crimes to the authorities when you can. Thanks for watching.